stuff, and then this girl tried to Photoshop the joke on the joke. I was like, bro, this ain't. What? I was like, I was like, yes, bro. This. How is going to date? Well, it's Kingdom and it's Dwayne. My name's Jasmine. We're Dwayne and Jazz. Today we have for you Shane's scariest catfishes ever. We saw this one. We saw this one catfish. I wish we could see so it with you. Funny. Oh I would my love God. to react to it for you guys, but copyright is copyright. <laughs> it was hilarious. Yeah. I'll tell she you about it at the end. Yet. I'll tell you. What that one is? <laughs> okay. Hey, what's up, you guys? Yes, it's time again for another creepy. <laughs> he always now, says yes. He wears the same shirt. <laughs> And some of these stories are very, very. Like, hey, you guys, yes. Yeah. Today we're going to be talking about <laughs> deaths that occurred because of online dating. Online dating is a multi billion dollar industry, and every day it becomes more and more popular. Over 50 people million people. Because people don't like to go out and socialize. Them. Everybody's anti social. Because so many people are trying it, sometimes the wrong people try it. Mm. And it can turn into a nightmare. Mm. First, we're going to be talking about a death that occurred because of Tim. So this happened on August 8th of 2014 in Australia. There was a 26-year-old girl named Maureen Wright. She was a tourist from New Zealand who met up with a bodybuilder that she met on Tinder named Gable Toasty. So they matched on Tinder. Toasty? Yeah. Toasty? Yeah. Maureen Wright and Gable Toasty are Toasty. virtual strangers when they meet in central Still. surface paradise. Mm -hmm. Only connecting six days earlier Those on Tinder. Let's around. get drunk together. <laughs> I'm a porn star after a few drinks. Now, after oh, yeah. Couple drinks the well, Tinder is about... Yeah, basically just trying to hook up. Drinks, mm -hmm. And they went back up to his apartment. Now, it was around 2 a.m. and they seemed to be having a good time. They were taking a bunch of selfies. They were hanging out. Things seemed to be going pretty well. And then something changed. Now, the details uh -oh. on this are a little bit unclear as to what exactly went down. But supposedly, they started fighting and she started getting aggressive and trying to throw things at him. And oh. he tried to pin her down. And then at some oh. point, she got so aggressive that he actually pushed her out onto the balcony and locked she the fell door. Off. So then, of course, she's banging on the door, begging to come back in. And then moments later, she fell. The balcony to Gable's apartment was 14 stories high, and she fell all the way down to her death. Mm. Now, oh, of course, right my away, God. the police come. Everybody assumes that Gable pushed her and yeah. that he did it. But oddly enough, he recorded the entire night. Why he recorded the night? I, I so look back at it? It's yeah. a three hour recording that has some scary shit. Three hours. He, he sounds pretty calm. See, though. This is fucking bullshit. You're lucky I even chucked you off my fucking balcony, you goddamn psycho little bitch. And mm. then right before oh my she God. died, you can hear this. He's in the <laughs> now this is where it gets really weird. You've been After a bad she girl. Fell, Gable left his apartment to get pizza, walked around for a while, and then called his dad. And he said this. Hello, dad. dad? Um, I might have a bit of a situation. I met up with a girl <clears throat> for a date tonight, and um, she started getting really aggressive. Maybe he was going to get pizza and then call. Really drunk. He probably didn't and, know what um, to do. Like, he probably was like, like, oh my god. Oh yeah, here. I don't know what to do. Let me get some pizza though. I think she might have jumped off. Let me think uh, about uh, it, uh, and then uh, I'm going to do something. Fucking disturbing. And after all of that, Gable was dismissed. He was cleared of murder. They said he didn't do it, and he said it was self defense Either way, this is a Tinder date. Oh, she. Why she? Okay, she know she like that, and why she get drunk? Incredibly fucked up. Don't care. That's because this involves online dating and also a sex slave. It's a lot. In 2012, a man what? named Graham Dwyer was a successful architect and a father of three. He had an obsession with sexual fantasies that were mixed with severe violence, and he was trying to find somebody that would be his sexual slave and let him. What is up with while that? He found his perfect lover and victim, and her name was Elaine Troy. So Elaine O'Hara was 36 years old and she was a child care worker. She had a pretty fucked up past and had a lot of mental issues. Oh, she also that's had a of self-harm and suicidal tendencies. Mm -hmm. Now but she he also was really into BDSM. Now when she met Graham online, they started talking about how they both really loved BDSM. And then it started taking a darker turn. Now some of the things that they were typing back and forth to each other were insane. Here's just a few clips. I'm your secret killer. My urge to rape, stab, and kill is huge. What? Still dying to knife someone. Stab, 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 rape, kill. And this yeah, is. Really, really this will really turn intense. someone on? This next one was even worse. 
It will all be worth it when I kill you, smiley face. Allie Lane's co-workers started noticing that she had some marks on her body, some bruises, and they were concerned. She was in the shop yes. and she stretched up to get something and she had bandages on her stomach. And I just kind of passively said, um, Elaine, what have you done to yourself? You know, what are you doing to yourself? And she said, oh, it's all right. It's nothing, Caroline. It's nothing like Caroline. But in hindsight now, it, you know, doesn't seem that it was her that was doing it at all. Like, at one oh my goodness. Why they think that Elaine fell for What Elaine was looking for more than anything was someone to love her and, yeah. and have mm -hmm. a companion. She was a very lonely, vulnerable girl, and um, he couldn't have picked a better person, he prayed upon a more vulnerable mm -hmm. person, to pray on. Now, over yeah. the course of their relationship, they met up several times to have sex, and they got really intense. He would beat her, he would cut her, he even stabbed her. What? She survived all of those until August of 2012. Graham asked Elaine to meet him in a park, and while he was having sex with her, he started stabbing her. But this time he didn't stop. He kept stabbing until she died. Now because of her history of suicidal tendencies, his plan was that when she met him in the park, she would, you know, leave her car empty, and people would think that it was a suicide. Well, a year later, a dog walker found Elaine's bones in the dirt, mm. and now Graham is surveying her lifetime. Yeah, well, that's crazy. Just like, I just can't believe people like that exist. Yes. Mm. Now this next story is less violent, but almost more disturbing. And this is a story of one of the scariest catfishes. There was mm. a woman named Natalie Burkus who had a very strange habit. She liked to steal identities of beautiful women online and enter in relationships with vulnerable men. And she would create oh, my space. characters no. and talk I didn't in have different one, so. voices. <laughs> now that seems very creepy. Talking different voices? Sometimes it she would be different kill people. the characters off. Like she would be talking to the guy that was in love with her and then call back the next day as a friend and say, oh my god, your girlfriend died, which would make them incredibly depressed. What? And this man really did think it was real. Were you really in love? Yeah. It sounds really real. Yeah, it sounds real. She sometimes would even talk to them as if she was the five-year-old daughter of the girl she was What? Be so fucking creepy. What did she say to you? Um, just saying, daddy, daddy, um, like telling me what's happened during the day and or if daddy, daddy, mom's on, mom's on drugs. That's somebody with multiple personalities. This is where it gets disorder. Disorder. Yeah. One of the men that she was catfishing was named Peter Russell. He was in love with the fake person she created named Laura West. He even sent her a video on his 21st birthday asking her to marry him. And Aww. he fell in love to the point that last year on his 21st birthday, he sent her a video message asking her to marry him. Wow. Well then, Laura, who was actually Natalie, broke up with him and he killed himself three months later. Oh my god. Because of this and also all the other lives that she ruined, she was sentenced to two years in jail. Now She's her answer longer. to why she did all this is very She felt like it, I bet. I've never felt attractive and I've never felt love when I miss I literally don't, didn't like who I was. I hated my life. And so that's when I first created Amy. They were the puppets, and I was the puppeteer, and I was just pulling the strings and sitting back and watching the show. I was the puppeteer, and I was the audience, you know? And I kind of got off on that sometimes. Okay, so this last one we're going to talk about is so Why do people mess with so other people because of how they feel this involves about themselves? Who very obsessed mm -hmm. with the show Dexter, and they took it. Oh, no, Dexter, no, man. Was a man named Mark Twitchell. Yeah, he kind of... <laughs> Look, right there, oh, yep, no. just dies here. He started in. making short films in his garage, and the one he was working on was called House of Cards. So here's oh. a clip from the- Don't ruin my no, favorite show like that. Show. It's a psychological thriller he said he was just doing for kicks, but it's believed Twitchell may have recreated his movie in a haunting case of life imitating art. Action. Uh. So here is the plot of the short film. A man who is married and has a seemingly normal life is a secret serial killer who seduces yeah, his victims online by using fake female characters. When they show up expecting a date, he kills them in the garage while wearing a scary mask. Now the scariest part, this was not just a plot in a short film. This he was, was really doing that. Wow. So after he made short film, in real life, he did create a fake female character and he did find a guy online. And that guy's and he name did was kill Johnny Altair. 
Now, as this fake woman, he invited Johnny to come see him. And then this yes. On the night of October, oh, that's crazy. Who he thought was a girl he had connected oh, with. Oh man. He gave him the address to a South Edmonton garage. Man. Mm. But when Altinger got here, there was a man waiting with a stun gun who said he was making a movie. A man police believe is Mark Twitchell. Yeah, and the scariest part, the mask that he was wearing was the same mask he was wearing in his short. Oh film. no. Now that was the last night. He just wants to get his and life on film. And his body has still not been found. Now no. Mark Twitchell is in jail for 25 years to life. And Thank you're probably you. wondering how did he get sent to jail if the body was never found? Well, this is where it gets even crazier. Police found a document that Mark wrote called Serial Killer Confessions, where he explained in graphic detail how he killed Johnny and what he did to him. He did the same what? thing on Dexter. Stabbing him, yeah. him, it's intense. Now, in court, when he was asked about this, he confessed and said that he did kill Johnny, and when they asked where the body was, in the river. Would not tell. Oh, mm -hmm. God. That one is so disturbing to me because it's well, like. Well, he the may be scattered it. Everybody in his life, his family, his friends, they're all just like, oh, he's just crazy Mark, you know, making his weird horror movie, but it's all real. Well, there you guys go. Those oh, are wow, man. Oh, my God. People be going a little too far, man. Just, y'all, oh, just talk. Meet people in person. Meet people in person. In a public area. Meet people in a public area where they can't do anything to you. Don't meet somebody after six days. Um... I can't stress that enough. Uh, just, just be careful when you're mm -hmm. online because every like you're faceless like on a computer. Like you're faceless, you're ageless, you're. I think one time I got like, catfished. You did. Yeah, but I learned from that. I like didn't somebody. meet nobody. I didn't meet nobody, but I thought they were somebody else, and then I found out that it. I was like this person. I was like, what's your number? And then I was like talking to him like. Mm -hmm. I'm like, send, send me a uh, picture of you holding up uh, a fork and with my oh, pit, yeah, yeah, like with, with your at name and all that other stuff. And then this girl tried to Photoshop. And Joe, oh, Joe, I was like, bro, this ain't, what? Yeah, I was like, I was like, yes, bro, this it was, was bad. This? this was before I even met you. I know that. I'm saying, but it was like, was it was like, I said, photo, give me your uh, name and put it on the thing. And she tried to Photoshop. <laughs> Oh my god. I was like, bro. I was like, oh. Come I remember on. somebody had used my photo, remember? Oh yeah. When I showed you that. Somebody said they used Jasmine as they a catfish. Used, they used me, not even me as a catfish. They used to be like for like their little like waist trainer thing. Oh yeah. What's that, on Facebook or something? Like yeah, that? it was like on Face. I think, yeah. I think, yeah, it was on Facebook or something. Like my friend had like sent it to me. She was like, she was like, do you know about this? And like I saw it. It was one of my pictures and they just added like, like, words to the bottom of it like yeah get your waist trainer now i was like i don't even use one <laughs> i was like what I was like, what is this and i reported lord, it and everything she said lord knows yeah lord knows we probably somewhere being used as catfish and we don't even know it i know we being used as uh youtube profile pics yeah so. but it's always of the bad pictures of us like i saw you making a weird face and they used me when i had the little mouth thing opener yeah and i just look crazy or the come back here face oh, that love to come back that, yeah like but the, i don't care about those. Yeah, those. it's cool. <laughs> but anyway, guys, please comment below. So, think. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. This is. What you say? I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit.